Hello everybody and welcome to the Gyrocopter Flying Club. Subscribe and select alerts to keep up to date with the daily content. Today's film will be about how to do perfect takeoffs. Having told you about all the errors you can make, this film is about how to do things well. If you're a student pilot then of course take things in this film on board but clearly you're working with an instructor and need to pass a particular flight test which may require a certain style. Also, to keep things sensible, I'm going to assume a level of knowledge regards airmanship and that you're happy with your rotor management. There's a link to my earlier film in the description and we will revisit this in a later film. I also assume that you can hold the centerline accurately during your ground roll. Brakes are in your hand, not latched, rotor brake is off, etc. The point here is we want to focus on the takeoff, nothing else. The starting point for great takeoffs is to become more disciplined in your actions. It's all too easy to casually line up, pre rotate, smash the throttle open, and blast down the runway to take off, giving little thought to anything else. And of course, in most cases, that works, but I'm willing to bet that more than half of those takeoffs are not what you might call your proudest moments. And not all errors lead to an accident, but they all damage confidence for the pilot or his passenger and that means you fly less. With all that said, our first discipline is to take care where to put the wheels. It sounds childishly simple, but look, why is this guy lining up on the grass when the hard runway is literally three meters ahead of him? Also, make sure that the aircraft is going in a straight line for the takeoff roll. It's very easy to line up and leave the aircraft still in a semi-turn as you stop. All these things are gonna have an effect when you start the ground roll. So, with pre-rotation to 200 to 220, you're going to consider breaking down the initial process as follows. Stick fully back and start the ground roll, and power to get moving and keep accelerating. Notice that's just two steps, because otherwise the risk is to overcomplicate and add steps that are either implied or very dependent upon aircraft. For example, the stick is already fully back in a Magni from around 120, so here we could substitute stick fully back for release the pre-rotator. It is implied that we release the wheel brake if we're going to start the ground roll. The point is to declutter and two steps to remember makes for much more mental capacity for what is to come. At this point we just need to care that the stick is fully back, the aircraft is accelerating and where the rotor RPM is. With rotor RPM increasing hold the stick fully aft until around 250 RPM and then go to 100% throttle. At this point, be ready to come forward with the stick no more than two fists worth and ensure the rotor RPM is increasing beyond 250. It should increase rapidly and the aircraft will be ready to fly. At 280 to 300 rotor RPM, the aircraft is almost at unstick and now your attention can come more to the airspeed indicator. It should be around 50 to 60 miles an hour and when the aircraft unsticks, it will almost be at climb out airspeed. Remember, it will want to your left and roll right at unstick, so anticipate. Because of your airspeed, the horizontal tail will be working well, and also your pitch attitude will be quite flat. Both give cleaner unsticks. Why does it work? Well, firstly, the process declutters the mind from trying to remember too many steps, some of which are not only implied, but aren't critical to flight safety anyway. Next, your focus is on the rotor RPM. In every single accident, where rotor RPM has been a factor. All pilots can remember where he pre-rotated to, but none can tell you what the rotor speed was prior to things going wrong. So if you look at the rotor taco, you'll know what your rotor speed is. And if the rotor speed decays, then what? If rotor speed decays less than 180 on starting the ground roll, you must close the throttle immediately and come to a stop and taxi back and reset. If having got up to 250 rotor RPM with the stick fully back and rotor RPM stops increasing when you ease the stick forward, you've gone too far. You need to ease the stick back until rotor RPM stabilizes and start the process again. But given the instructions, that's a very unlikely event. 